guests and the audience. Uh, welcome to our session, Psychological Barriers, Safety and Regulations. First of all, I want to thank uh, Swedish Wood and the Circle and the, all the supporters and the sponsors of this activity, which I believe will be very beneficial for uh, Turkish timber society and the uh, uh, shareholders and stakeholders and all the people interested in this uh, field. My name is uh, Göksel Korkmaz. I'm in timber uh, industry for uh, more than 35 years. Uh, and uh, currently in the recent years, we are very active in uh, structural timber and enhancing uh, consumption of timber in Turkey. And our association for it, uh, which is Turkish Forest Industry and Businessmen Association, I am uh, president of this uh, association at the moment. Today uh, is a special day for us uh, because we have National Arbor Day, 11 of 11, my month of 11. So till the end of this year, uh, we'll be planting 250 million uh, seedlings uh, in our forest. This is organized by uh, General Directorate of Forestry. Uh, so regarding our subject, uh, there are in, in all societies, there are prejudices uh, for uh, uh, usage of timber, timber structures, uh, actually Turkey having uh, a wood culture, which is dating back to 600 years ago, uh, which is not new for us, but in the last 100 years, we got away from this uh, experience and uh, due to the quick urbanization and uh, uh, immigration to big cities, uh, the construction type is mainly concentrated on concrete. So we want to revive the old experience and uh, expand usage of timber structures. Uh, today we have uh, guests who are real experts in their fields. Uh, I want to start with uh, Helena Lightlow from Sweden. She has PhD in timber structures and after 15 years of uh, experience in academia, uh, she had the assistant professor degree. And then starting in 2010, uh, she started working in the industry. She has a textbook, Industrialized House Building, and this is used in many Swedish universities. So her main expertise is research and development and design. Also, uh, construction management, building technology, industrialized, sustainable construction. So, uh, Elena, floor is yours. Can you please uh, start your uh, presentation? Thank you. Thank you, Goxel. That's very nice. Uh, and uh, welcome. Uh, I hope everyone can hear and see well. Thank you. Uh, so, I represent a company that's called Lindex Big. We are very north in Sweden, uh, very close to the polar circle. So currently we have uh, something like six uh, hours of daylight uh, with us. And uh, I'm, uh, I come from a culture where industrialization is um, the key and it is uh, something I'm, I'm very used to. So this would be an illustration from our factory uh, where we produce timber frame modules. And as you can see, the, it, uh, it is very similar to a car um, manufacturing plant, where everything here is uh, on a single piece flow. And uh, our production here can output uh, 12 of these uh, modules every day. And they are then used to make these kinds of buildings. So on your right, you see examples. Those are timber buildings inside, but you wouldn't really uh, see that from the outside. And on your left is an example of a floor plan where we have divided the floor plan into producible modules that we then make in our factory and then assemble on site. So we have two factories, uh, one in each part of, of Piteå, which is a small town uh, in the northern part of Sweden, but uh, our uh, current and newest factory to the right 
um, is 42,000 square meters uh, and produces um, houses that are distributed all over Sweden and also currently in Finland. So of course, uh, you have to look at uh, where we come from uh, when you judge our, our knowledge in this. And we have uh, 25 years of experience um, using these me methods. Um, so we have in our factory a Weinmann wall line come from Germany. It's 75 meters long and it's able to produce one wall every seven minutes and it runs on machine files that comes from our CAD system. So this is an automatic production. All the materials and waste that we have in the factory are transported using trains inside the factory. So this is very much logistics operation, how it, when it runs. Uh, our production is, is organized. Uh, when you see uh, this picture, you will realize that pe people are working on the modules to the right. They have an alley for walking in the middle and the materials come in from the left. So it's organized to be fast uh, in assembly mode. And we have uh, often visitors with us and here you see people coming at us from uh, undergraduate school and they are then shown how, how this kind of industry can work. Um, but of course there is reluctance towards uh, this kind of building system. So the first thing is fire. This is a timber frame building. So we have uh, systematically tested uh, floors and walls uh, in the fire ovens and uh, we are confident that we can uh, sustain 90 minutes. We also work a lot with the um, and details, so sealants and fire bar barriers are tested. And then the important point with this slide is uh, the um, quality control. So you see the app in the middle, it's uh, something that we developed together with uh, other companies. So every time we need to make a passage through a fire um, barrier, then we uh, take a photo and we document it uh, for the project. So our customers can see that we did what we said and it's also up to standard. So the second thing that we always meet is the issue with moisture. So doesn't uh, doesn't wood uh, mold and rot and, and just simply disappear. Well, we, we respect that. Uh, of course it does if you treat it uh, the wrong way. Uh, so we, we measure the moisture content uh, of the wood uh, as it comes into our factories. Uh, we, um, we have a high temperature or normal temperature for us uh, in the factory when we do the production. We make tests of all the water and heat pipes as they leave the factory. So we're sure that there are no leakages. And the picture you see in the middle here is our bathrooms. So this would be a bathroom pod. Uh, and the bathroom pod is a fully sealed um, glass fiber reinforced composite. It's more or, like, more or less like a boat, uh, so it doesn't leak at all. And our uh, insurance companies uh, are quite fond of this idea because it takes away a lot of the risk uh, with water damage in the bathrooms. We try to, we try to uh, store and handle all the materials uh, as well as possible. And when we plan for the new factory, we, we realize that the bathroom pods are going to be essential to keep up with the speed that we need. Uh, so then uh, PTO being a town where composites is, is a big part of the culture, it was a natural solution for us to do this. And the third uh, issue you can have with the timber building is acoustics. Uh, unless you then live in an area where you also um, have problems uh, with earthquakes and seismic, uh, because we, we do not, so I should stress that. Uh, so I haven't had to, to address uh, any seismic issues. But acoustics, uh, airborne sound and step sound. Um, so for us, it's important to have a double structure. So always when you work um, with modules, you have two walls, one belonging to each module that are standing adjacent to each other. And you also have the floor and the ceiling of the two uh, modules that are stacked on top of each other. So that makes um, a separation that's uh, very beneficial when you work with acoustic problems. Unless you have people on site to decide that this is a nice place to have a screw attached and then you can destroy everything. So it's a sensitive system in that sense. You need to know what you're, you're doing. The structural integrity is, uh, is a part that we have been working with. Work with acoustic problems. 
sometimes you have people outside to decide that this is a nice place to have a screw attached and then you can destroy everything. So it's a sensitive system in that sense. You need to know what you're, you're doing. Yes, so the person who has hop in the integrity is uh, is the part that we have been working with. So the static load carrying capacity uh, is up to eight stories. So the quarter that you see here in the middle with the red building, it's all modules. Uh, and we have then made analysis of the dynamic per performance of these to make sure that we don't have vibrations from wind. Uh, and this is uh, something that has been enabled through us having people uh, like myself and a few colleagues that actually have been to university and taken some some extra studies and become PhDs uh, to be able to handle this kind of, of problem. Uh, and um, sustainability, if you talk to any customer or client in Sweden today, sustainability is uh, the big thing. So everyone is talking about how can we minimize the carbon uh, dioxide footprint from our production and from our uh, products. And when we started out, we had to fight to convince people that this timber structure really works. And now we actually have ministers in Sweden saying that you should build in wood, it's sustainable. So having that journey during those 20, 25 years has been kind of interesting to go from persona non grata to, okay, you're the ones we are going to build on uh, in the future. Our on-site process, we try to have that as short as possible because we want to respect the fact that this is a building system where we have exposure of wood, which can be a sensitive material uh, in our um, part of the world. So we try to do foundation works in parallel to what happens uh, in the factory. And then also make parts of the roof um, before the modules arrive uh, on site. So there are situations when we are, are able to use the roof uh, parts as lid uh, for the structure when we come uh, on site. And uh, this on site process makes us, uh, I believe there was a report the other day that came, came out saying that we were 30% faster than other construction, but I will leave that to the report and, and not claim that for myself. Uh, so I would just want to stop here and uh, uh, leave back to you, uh, Axel. Thank you. Thanks, Elena. It was a very nice presentation. The, the questions will come after. I have some questions also. But now I want to uh, continue with uh, Professor Ahmed Turan. Uh, he's uh, head of civil engineering department in Middle East Technical University. He had his PhD in the uh, United States in the uh, University of Cincinnati. Uh, he is uh, giving courses on uh, timber structures, Eurocode 5, uh, and also his experience in historic uh, structures, bridges, structural evaluation, condition assessment. Uh, so, uh, from point of uh, earthquake uh, uh, risk in Turkey, he is doing uh, great uh, works and uh, academic studies. Uh, so floor is yours, Mr. Kerr. Jörg Sarbi, many thanks for your kind introduction. Um, we have approximately 10 minutes, so I will try to make the best out of it. Uh, I have prepared uh, a presentation too. Uh, this is uh, going to be from a structural point of view, if I may. Uh, so it's an engineering perspective, uh, so there is architectural too. Um, uh, my presentation has these five uh, items, let's say, current use of uh, timber in construction, safety, uh, technical regulations, uh, cost comparison, and psychological barriers. When I talk about uh, current use of timber in construction, I will mention a little bit about Turkey too. Uh, although historically Turkey has been using a lot of timber structures in the past, currently uh, we have uh, we are not using it anymore, and mostly reinforced concrete is uh, uh, the type of construction in Turkey. Now, uh, for the current use, <coughs> as structural engineers, we can use solid timber 
but uh, increasingly uh, amount of times we are switching to glue, lam glue laminated timber, which individual parts are glued together to form larger cross sections. Because with this technology, you can not only have curved members, but also you can have very deep uh, cross sections for columns and beams, and you can span larger distances. Timber being a lightweight structure, combined with the high strength, uh, it is a structural engineer's dream. And uh, today uh, in United States and Canada, 95% uh, of the houses are made out of timber, whereas it is less than 5% in Turkey. Uh, so there is a new technology, relatively new, which is called cross-laminated timber. Uh, in this, uh, it is like uh, glue lamp, but the orientation of the members are alternating 90 degrees to each other so that you can uh, have a plate uh, that you can use as a shear wall or for the slab. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, all the saw dust you get uh, from cutting uh, timbers you can uh, glue them together to make particle boards, either MDF, HDF, or uh, coarse particle woods, or you can shave the timbers uh, uh, from trees in thin slices, and you can combine them as plywood, LVL, LVB, and uh, other, uh, other material. So uh, there's a, a major difference uh, between LVL and LVB or plywood, uh, the layers are either 90 degrees or uh, parallel to each other, zero degrees. So uh, by this, they are either used in uh, as a plate, as you see here, or as a beam, as a structural element. There are more varieties. There's no time to go into each sub-segment. Uh, laminated strength lumber, parallel strength lumber, oriented strength lumber, and composites, of course. Here you see a beam, uh, the web is made out of steel and the top and bottom flanges are from solid timber. Sometimes it's combined with steel uh, cross section and glue lamb, solid timber, steel, they go all together nicely. And in this example, you see a very wide uh, arched type of uh, uh, structure. Uh, with a large span and composite um, cross-section. Uh, now, uh, the structural use of these materials or um, the segments can be categorized in a variety of ways. I will just mention a few that are most frequently used. Uh, post and beam method is just like what we are used to with reinforced concrete. We have columns and beams, uh, so made out of timber. There is a, a light frame construction where the load is carried by the walls instead of uh, columns, as you see in here. Uh, this is very frequently used uh, in America too. Uh, you can make uh, private houses versus apartments as well. You can go easily up to 10 floors. And if you notice, sometimes the first floor is out of reinforced concrete. Uh, just to keep the humidity out, um, but it is not mandatory. There is the prefabricated version where uh, most of the construction is completed in factory and they are logo uh, combined uh, on site, which is very fast construction. And uh, there are some nice examples as you see here. Sometimes it even comes with the window door openings or uh, the windows and doors already installed. So CLT uh, construction here is an example to prefabricate it. And uh, they are like very fast construction. There's the pole buildings. This is agricultural and not very frequent, but I just wanted to mention it anyhow. Uh, the columns are uh, out of poles, like uh, timber tr uh, tree trunks. Uh, and uh, this is frequently used in the country uh, countryside. Well, historically, uh, Turkey had wooden houses since 16th century. There was a very big earthquake in 1509 in Istanbul, 
And uh, Sultan uh, back then uh, has commanded that all of the houses will be constructed out of timber from now on. And for the last 500 centuries up to 20th century, it was uh, timber most of the time. We have historic structures uh, made out of timber, mosques more than 800 years old. And uh, here are some examples from Safranbolu, Kastamonu, uh, Beypazarı, close to Ankara, Rize. So as you can see, they have combinations of stone, stone plus timber and timber only. So they use all kinds of innovative use. Sometimes part of the building is uh, one kind and the other part is uh, different types of timber and stone. Uh, here's an example of a mosque, uh, which is 800, eight centuries old. We have traditional uh, timber houses by the Bosphorus Strait which are uh, extremely uh, expensive. Well, uh, this was a general overlook. So uh, to make better use of my time, I will go a little bit faster. When it comes to safety, uh, there was this small doomsday and Sultan Bezit II ordered, uh, as I have told you. He has seen a very basic principle that is known from uh, 16th, 17th century. Um, well, Newton uh, knew this when he had the apple falling on his head. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is the uh, earthquake. And if you have a light mass, then you have a smaller force. So the Lambert's principle also uh, falls into this, even Einstein's. But to make things uh, simple, you can imagine uh, a structure on a, on a vehicle. And as the vehicle is accelerating, the inertial force acting on it is going to be in the opposite direction. So earthquakes are just like that. If you have a light uh, structure, the forces are smaller. And if you have a strong material, then your building wouldn't collapse. So uh, with timber structures, our capacity is high and our mass is low. So it is the perfect combination. Uh, here you can see a comparison of timber, concrete and steel. Uh, timber is about 300, 500 kilogram per meter cube. Concrete is 2,500 kilogram per meter cube. Steel is almost three times that. But strength wise, uh, this is 30 to 50 megapascal. And this is the characteristic strength. It can easily go up to 80 megapascal or so. And concrete is typically 30, 35 and steel is within this range. So if you normalize with respect to the mass, Timber uh, looks like um, uh, stronger than all uh, when, uh, when you normalize with the mass. So we have up to C50, uh, 50 megapascal timber in softwood, up to 80 megapascal uh, in hardwood. And these are all uh, characteristic strength. So 80 megapascal means 95% of all of the samples you collect are going to be equal to or larger than 8 megapascal. Um, technical regulations in Turkey, we have Eurocode and TS649 in effect, uh, but usually uh, municipalities and the Ministry of Environment and Urbanization uh, produces national rules and regulations. So we will be working on this uh, this year and next year. Hopefully they will be out soon. Uh, and also some review mechanisms and procedures for the municipalities. This year, uh, OGM uh, has passed a study on strength grading of uh, national wood. So we are uh, pretty much ready for the usage of uh, timber structures in the short uh, future. Uh, cost is very important for civil engineers and uh, the constructors. There is a comparison study in Canada, which is, you can reach to the details from this link. They have tested a six story uh, house and they found uh, the cost, if it is made out of steel, if everything is from concrete, if the first floor is concrete, five levels are wood, and if all levels are wood. So as you can see at the bottom, 
uh, one plus five or six floors of wood uh, always has a better cost uh, advantage, uh, uh, like 11 to 12%. And this doesn't include the early finishing, uh, which uh, Helena has just mentioned. Now about the psychological barriers. Um, these are uh, some of the barriers that even my wife has. So we, we argue every now and then. People think uh, timber structures are weak against fire, that uh, bugs would eat them because they are organic. It would degrade and corrupt very quickly and there might be mold or uh, whatever, so uh, it won't last long. Uh, and it is difficult to heat during winters because poorly heat insulated and it is not as strong as concrete and steel. I think I have just ruled out the last item, but uh, if you think about the fire, actually it is uh, much better uh, in many of the cases because it burns out slowly and uh, there's this charcoal developing so you can easily attain this 60, 90 minute requirement. Whereas for concrete, if your tension rebars are melted or exceeding 600 centigrade degree, then you could lose your beams. The same thing for steel. And in a fire, you can easily go up to 1000 centigrade degrees in less than a minute. Um, so here's this famous photograph of timber surviving the fire the steel and rebars from the concrete uh, just lie on it. So this is very often uh, seen. Bugs can eat, there's timber impregnation that uh, if you want, you can have some uh, uh, post-treatment of timber to protect it from mold, humidity and bugs. So it is done in big storage tanks uh, and this chemicals go in once and then it stays there or you can have some sort of varnish on the surface. And when the fire comes in, it just expands uh, and doesn't allow the oxygen to pass into the timber. So you see three examples here that uh, with the treatment, and it is clear uh, until the fire comes in and then your structure doesn't collapse and doesn't burn. It is called intumescent uh, painting or coating. When it comes to difficult to heat or warm up, the wood is a thermal conductivity of 0 0.13. It is just next to the you know, insulation materials, three or four times this. But if you compare this with concrete, uh, you see that concre concrete has a much larger value, 0 0.13 versus 20. So steel is uh, nowhere near. It is more than, I don't know, 300, 100 to 300 times. And if uh, you use some foam, uh, thermal insulation foam between the voids, then it is the perfect uh, thing to use uh, for winter and summer, heating and cooling. So you can see the thermal insulation here, in addition to the timber, which would uh, make it perfect. So for the final words, production uh, of timber uses solar energy because as you know, all of the plants through their leaves uh, use the uh, solar energy and the raw material comes from the air, which is carbon dioxide. So timber uses carbon uh, in the air. Uh, so uh, it has negative carbon dioxide emission and is smallest footprint compared to other construction materials. It's a super material from strength, mass, thermal conductivity, carbon dioxide, storage and things like that. It is advantages for earthquakes. 95% of the people in Turkey are in, living in earthquake prone regions. By land, uh, our 95% of the land is uh, susceptible to earthquakes. Cost and fast construction and fire, these are all advantages. It is sustainable. It's a green technology. And uh, most likely timber is going to be the construction material of the 21st century. Um, I thank you very much for your uh, interest in listening. Uh, so hopefully I'm not over my time too much. Thank you, Ahmed Bey. It was a very sophisticated uh, presentation. <laughs>
Thank you. Uh, uh, now, uh, I received a message from technical team that Helena will leave earlier. Uh, is that right, Helena? Because there is, if you will leave early, there is a question forwarded to you. I want to ask that question and then continue with the other panelists. Yes, please ask your question. Yes, I have to leave. As we're running late, it's going to be difficult to be on hopping, but I can answer your question. Okay, uh, this question is from Miss Aisha Shahin. She says, is it possible to visit your factory and analyze the production process within the scope of PhD studies? Uh, will you have time to help uh, her? This is the yeah. question. Uh, I'm sure you can find my email address uh, on the website for Linbex, and uh, it would be um, a pleasure to accept uh, a visit uh, concerning PhD studies, uh, and we're, we're happy to help with research. Uh, we're a little bit more strict when it comes to other industries, but for research would be okay. All right. There is another question from Ajay Chakar. This can be forward or to Mr. Trer, but uh, let me read the question. I would like to ask uh, regarding seismic performance of additions with wood. Yesterday, we had a panel about adding and adapting to existing buildings. There was an example of adding timber floors on top of existing brick building. Obviously, they do not have the earthquake risk in Sweden. So how would those kind of extension or addition projects perform during an earthquake? Well, I can ask because I've been working a bit internationally uh, too, so maybe I can um, start answering and someone else can, can uh, continue. Um, my perception is that wooden structures are uh, quite good uh, from the start because they have a lot of dissipation energy. Uh, the joints are not very stiff, so it means it can move and dissipate energy during an earthquake. The problem, as I perceive it, is to have enough hold downs so the structure doesn't move and fall down. Uh, so that would be the design. I've spoken to people in, uh, in New Zealand and they uh, tell me approximately that if I double my wind load that I'm used to here in the northern part of Europe, uh, I would have enough capacity to, to sustain earthquakes. So I think this would be doable. Okay. Uh, so I have a small question, a personal, uh, my, my question. Um, we are following the uh, countries who are um, really progressed in timber and uh, forestry. Regarding this CRT and Glulam, uh, we see, we realize that Austria and German, Germany, uh, Alpine countries, let's say, are more a bit ahead of uh, the others in, uh, for example, in CRT and Glulam co uh, compared with the Sweden and Finland. So is it a kind of policy or a preference or just by coincidence it goes that way? Uh, would you, because you are in industry also, uh, so as also you mentioned you took the example of automotive industry in your factory, so I appreciate if you give a quick reply to that. Yes, uh, no CLT is popular also here. I think it has a cultural spread, so it wasn't invented in Sweden and Finland. So there, it has to. It takes some time for adoption, uh, but uh, the increase in uh, multi-family um, timber buildings the last three years. It has almost uh, been um, solely uh, on CLT uh, and that uh, part of, of technology. So we now have our own plants uh, and CLT made of our raw material uh, has a high quality and the engineers are now learning how to use it. So um, in terms of automation, as you mentioned, uh, CLT is of course a material that can be uh, quite easily uh, manufactured but also handled and, and uh, routed and so forth so you can you can have holes for fittings and for windows and openings and so forth so i think um, we're only seeing the the beginning of this expansion uh, and with with our timber supply i would be very surprised if if it wasn't it's going to grow in the coming years okay now thanks uh, for your kind reply uh, Yes. If I may add uh, one more item to Elena's first uh, comments. Yeah. Uh, for the earthquake and the wind, she has mentioned nicely. Uh, 
Well, I think the question was, or I sometimes uh, uh, exposed to similar questions. What if, if we add two more floors to an existing building, uh, for example, made out of bricks originally, but then two more floors out of timber, since it's lightweight, would it be fine, especially that it's lightweight and uh, vertical and horizontal forces. Um, uh, and uh, it is usually uh, not desirable uh, because in the past, uh, in earthquake prone regions, like in Japan, United States, people have tried to construct lower part out of reinforced concrete and the upper part out of steel. And uh, during the earthquakes, it has been shown that this interaction point where it switches from concrete to steel uh, had uh, tremendous damage and uh, they had difficulty with uh, uh, preventing damage there. So uh, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing educated guess that uh, timber to brick connections might also experience damage during an earthquake. But uh, uh, in theory, it sounds good. Uh, I think we might need more research on this uh, for the earthquakes, how uh, different floors made out of different materials. OK. Thank you, Amatey. So now we continue with the third panelist, Mr. Sedat Sarratlan. He is an architect and graduated from Middle East Technical University, the same university that Amatey teaches nowadays. Um, he has uh, extensive experience on wooden structure designs. Uh, he worked in Italy, USA, and Canada. Uh, he specialized in urban design, working on timber and timber combined buildings. Uh, so I want to forward the question to Mr. Sadat and uh, let him the floor. As an architect, why would you choose wood and timber as construction material in your work? Please go ahead. Your microphone is off. Uh, you must unmute. Okay. Yes, the, the, there is, you know, first of all, we have to talk about the, there is no ideal material for anything. Also for the, for the structure. Uh, we should, we have to talk first of all, the advantage and disadvantage. When you focus on the timber, there is a lots of advantage uh, because the lightweight and the Ahmed Bey uh, briefly explained the, support capacity and supporting capacity and related to weight. It uh, looks like the, you know, the, uh, this is a statical way for, especially for the compression and tension uh, uh, loads. And it, it, it's perfect for the compression, almost look like the steel. Arm. It's a lightweight, easy to, to work. And uh, so also, Besides the structural features, also it, 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 it's a good for the, you know, the humidity and the moisture is in an, get in the environment and give it, give it back and it's not affected to itself, you know. If you use it the properly, there's a lots of uh, advantages. That's why we are, I'm personally and I'm highly advised to focusing to build a structure with wood. So, but there are lots of problems. There are lots of missing details. There are, there are lots of misusing the materials. It's not a weakness of the uh, wood. We, we should focus how to use it. We should focus the physical features and the relation with the other materials. You know, the, as, as uh, I'm going to uh, show the, some images related to, um, in general, uh, some of my projects. Uh, it's important things relate the uh, combined materials, you know, wood with steel, with wood brick, with stone. Uh, it's, it's very important details. Uh, it's very advantage. Uh, there's a highly advantage material, especially for the adding floors on top of the concrete or the brick or uh, machinery building. 
there's a lots of advantages and then there are some technical details uh, statically connected with the existing structure um, uh, horizontally and vertically um, yeah I would like to show some um, I, I'd like to share my screen first I guess If I can manage. Is that okay? Can you, it's, are you seeing? Can you make a full screen? Because it's not full screen at the moment. Okay, just a second. Just a second. Is that okay? If that's okay, I can share the screen and I'll, and I'll uh, leave the control to you. Is that okay? Okay, please. You can start it to. Is that right? Can you see it now? Are you so, seeing? Um, yes. Yes, no problem. Perfect. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? May I continue? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. This is the this is the one of the simple. Just a second. Okay. Just a second. Sedat Bey, az önce görüyorduk çok güzel. Şimdi iptal ete basarsanız geriye döner muhtemelen. Uh, okay. Sağ ve sol tuşlarıyla geçebilirsiniz. Okay. Yeah, this is one of the simple uh, structure with structure. It's um, a shapes and the, the trusses. This is a fantastic uh, wood doors. Everyone's love it. There's a Mostly, it, it, there's a skill on it, and then it's it's lasting a long time period if you maintain it properly. This is the, some example about uh, structures. Uh, th this is the typical ones. Uh, it's uh, you know the floors, wall, roof, everything is wood. It's uh, uh, you can. You can finish in a best way. It's, you can control it and easily assemble. You can easily uh, produce it, as you know. This is the fantastic shots about the uh, types of the plywood. This is another, everyone knows about this structurally. It's uh, uh, kinds of plywood, finish made, and, you know, carto, they call it. And in Sevilla, it's in extreme, as extreme conditions. I, I don't have any idea about the existing uh, situation, but it, it, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's totally uh, pushing the limits. This is the traditional way of combined, using the combine with the stone, brick walls, the wood facade with the windows. This is the interior using the highly uh, professional way to uh, woods. It, it, this is kind of relaxing environment, flooring walls and the roof. Uh, it, I'm going to speed up. And then this is the fantastic flooring. This is from the Venice and some uh, structural beams supporting by the columns, marble columns. 
Uh, this is the passage passage in one of the Aegean Island uh, using the timber. Uh, this is in Mulai. It's one of the tra traditional uh, houses structures in Turkey. This is the details of the structure. It's fantastic. And this is the this is the countryside timber structure filling with the stone and brick mud. This is the this is another example. The uh, wooden pieces still survive, falling apart to all the stoneworks and the roof. Uh, but uh, you know the windows corner and the beams still survive. This is another example. So this is the proof of the it, wood. Wood is not a fragile material. So it's a resistible the environment more than live. Uh, one of the settlements, it is south of Turkey. The, you know, the empty things at all the roofs, windows, doors was, was wood, but removed, used to some other purpose. It's a damage. This was the original ones left and the, you know, the timber structure roofs and the, there was a timber balcony here and also the shutters and the windows wood. This is the area, but the, this is the land and this is the uh, environment. This is the original buildings, one of the left. Uh, again, it, it's a, it, it, this is the timber structure, uh, balcony, doors and windows, still timber, still survive. But this is the view, this is the area, but today, the people willing to build with the concrete in, in this fantastic area. Uh, lacking of the control, lacking of to define the land use plans and properly. Uh, this, is, this is another structure everyone knows and the uh, beginning. Uh, uh, orphanage is the the uh, fantastic stretch, but for still stand up, but uh, is a, is da highly damaged roof and they damaged the whole structure. This is this is the exactly define it. What is the problem? Pro pro problem is the roof drain. It it is stop here always wet this area and damage it. You know that's the, it's it's a simple 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 solution you can solve this problem but there, there there's no maintenance things there that nobody take care about this building another example the roof leakage and the uh, damage first to stucco and afterward is the strapping on the wood structure and also also the main beams crossing the uh, larger area This is the one of my project is adding the uh, existing the brick, uh, yeah, brick buildings, top floor is with structure, as you see that attached to buildings and the lime stucco on top of it. Uh, all the flashing details, you can see the flashing details on the, every, each floors, windows, doors on top of it, and the drip edge, uh, wood profile also. The windows, it's a 120 years old windows, double angle windows, uh, repair and refix it, uh, still active. It's a very fine profile of the wood. Uh, this is the original one. This is the missing one. Produce it new, and then you, you can use the, the same space, both of them. Uh, the same buildings facade. This is another example of. Uh, you, you see the. Um, these are all originals. 
this is uh, reconstruct, reproduce it, and refix it. Um, How can we? This is the facade and the two attached building connected each other's and finally finish with all the flashing. The, this this floor is these two floor is the is the wood structure, but you no know, man, you cannot notice the differences. These are all brick. The next building, the additional two floor is also wood. Rest of it, this is the um, heritage building built um, in 1874. Another project at the island, uh, one of the Aegean Island, and um, this is the soap production space used to be used. And uh, this is, this was it, uh, before and after to repair it to all the stoneworks with the lime mortar. And these are the structural wood, olive tree. Look at this. Uh, this is also the original old ones, yeah, more than 200 years old, and then treated with the uh, olive oils and lime mortar finishing. This is the uh, reproduced uh, pine window. This is the result. This is another project. Uh, uh, so okay. can, can we speed up a little bit last three Okay, minutes? this is, yeah, sorry about that. This is the um, six meters length table, timber, cedar. Um, as some example, also the old building at the restoration, the flooring and the windows, doors, all wood. Uh, roof spaces, also the good for the acoustics. Rooms, uh, upper floor. Also, this is the structural roof. Uh, yeah, you see the, exactly the, it's good also for the acoustic, as I said before, I speed up. For example, this is the restoring, this, this is the timber uh, wood, wood ceiling. Restore it, uh, adding the, some missing pieces with the rough. I'm gonna speed up. These are the details of the wood ceiling details. Keep it as it was, the, just clean it uh, for the conservation purpose. This is another woodworks. Uh, this is the pre-stressed pre uh, pre pre uh, tables underneath the details. Uh, this is the Canadian postal beam structure finished assembled 20 years ago almost. This is another example in, in, in Bolo area, Turkey. This is all wood, also the shake roof, shingle, shake sh shingle roof. Uh, this is another good example for the flexibility of wood. This is this building and the original building and adding uh, this finish, this building was finished 15 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, and then afterwards and adding the another space. Uh, there was a, some level differences also as the interiors, it's all the rafters exposed. This is another Canadian post pin timber structure. This is also the restorations and the stoneworks on top of it. Uh, Timber roof, flooring, nicely used, but uh, how you can manage to splash the waters on the, this is another detail. 
Um, uh, this is the countertop. I, I have to. I have to tell something about the detail, designing details, especially the interiors and architectural finishing details. How can you how can you save this fantastic timber surfaces, dripping waters and splashing? This could be a solution, maybe. Uh, this is wood, and for the deck, that deck on any any boat, it's yeah. This is the way to how to survive most of the times in the wet uh, uh, environment. Fire in, in, in Istanbul, coincidence, it's the burns up to all. Uh, scare, people scare about the fire. It, it's a psychological thing. And this is the famous fire. They cannot uh, solve. But it psychologically the fire is not uh, is not uh, is not a reason the materials the wood is not uh, not wood is not uh, the materials for the fire you know that that in a boat is this is the wooden boat the, what it's scared about uh, is this boat can be fire in fire yeah. This is the Can we finalize so that we yeah, yeah, this is the final yeah this is this is the fantastic you know the drip patch on the all the materials details uh, architects have to be focused on these details I guess uh, this is the uh, condensed water uh, drain details this is very important in most cases uh, people cannot. Uh, focus on these details. Maybe I, I have to finish this. I guess time up. Uh, there are lots. There are more. Um, we can continue in question and answer. This is the final things. I'm I'm highly advised to any designing person about this book, uh, Timeless Way of Building, Christopher Alexander. So as I said before at the beginning, and uh, uh, timber is the fantastic materials, but we have to we have to know how to use it. And then uh, this books. Uh, guide to all the designers i guess most of the people are there all the way thank you thank you Sadat Bey. so we have seen the beauty of the wood with an eye of an architect because the other three speakers they are civil engineers and structural engineers so you are the only architect in the panel in this session okay thanks for the presentation now the the last and uh, the fourth uh, panelist mr thomas asmaker from sweden uh, Mr. Thomas is a structural engineer. He has a master's degree at uh, Lund University and adjunct professor in wood design and technology at <coughs> uh, Linnerus Lin University, if I read correctly. Um, he is the starter of multi-story wooden buildings in Sweden uh, in 1995. Uh, so uh, before uh, giving the floor to Thomas, I want to start again with a question. Mr. Thomas, can you uh, also uh, uh, give us the story of the journey started in 1995 up to today uh, as a structural engineer? How was the acceptance of the society, reaction, acceptance to wooden structures, uh, mainly multi-story wooden buildings was new to your society also? So we appreciate if you pass us your uh, experience. Thank you. I will try to do that. Thank you very much, Gexel, and uh, thank you for being invited to uh, this session. Um, I will just try to share my screen. Any network connection troubles? I think uh, Mr. Thomas has any 
some network Thomas, can, can you hear us Thomas are you disconnected does it look like a network trouble yes you don't know uh, Shall we continue with questions until he gets uh, reconnected or shall we wait? What do you suggest? So Ahmed Bey, let me ask you questions to you while waiting for Thomas. Uh, regarding the uh, uh, enhancing and increasing uh, usage of timber in Turkey, I think we are also uh, lacking in regulations for making wooden structures, timber buildings, getting permissions from municipalities, etc. So can you please uh, uh, advise how to proceed, what kind of difficulties we are facing and uh, what shall we do? Yeah, this is uh, one of the major uh, problems, uh, obstacles, let's say, in Turkey. Um, uh, when the regulations are considered, currently, actually, uh, civil engineers can design timber structures using Eurocode uh, 5 or TS 647. Uh, uh, but uh, getting these uh, projects uh, through the municipalities is a trouble. Uh, I have heard that if you bring a project Ah, oh, Thomas is back. They are asking for... Uh, Thomas, just two minutes, please. And I, uh, Mr. Ahmed was uh, replying... Absolutely. To I don't know about to. what happened. I, I just uh, was thrown out. That's a, It's Murphy's Law, Thomas. Yes, <laughs> I know. Uh, glad to have you back. I was just saying uh, for the municipalities, it is still a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully next year, uh, together with Torit, Ulsal uh, Ashab uh, Derni, uh, Ministry of Urbanization, we will tackle this problem. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, Thomas, please uh, start your uh, presentation. Thank you very much. And I will tell you a little bit about our history in Sweden regarding multi-story timber frame buildings. But I will start even even longer back in, in time. Uh, I want to start with this beautiful bridge because the, we, we are looking for ways to bridging over psychological barriers, different kinds of historical barriers, psychological barriers, technical barriers, regulation barriers, etc. And this bridge, uh, it was already uh, proposed by Leonardo da Vinci in 1502 uh, on the Golden Horn. Uh, it was a bridge in masonry bridge, and it was never built. Um, it, but this and the sketches uh, like this one was uh, <clears throat> uh, lost for about 400 years and was found again in 1952, I think it was. And um, 2001, almost 500 years after this uh, proposal, the bridge was uh, rebuilt, so to speak, in timber in Norway. So the bridge, this is a bridge between Istanbul and Aarhus in Norway, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> uh, it is a bridge in history and it is a bridge in craftsmanship. It is a bridge between different materials. The original one was intended to be constructed in stone. And this one is carried out in glue lamp. And it is also a bridge in technology. The craftsmanship 1502 is quite different compared to this kind of 
craftsmanship. I call it the industrial craftsmanship. We have now new tools being able to do fantastic um, buildings of different kinds. And I also want to show this one, a mosque in Cambridge, also a um, bridge between different countries, different religious religions, etc. But also a very, an extraordinary example on and industrialized craftsmanship. This mosque is prefabricated. It's the, the parts is, is constructed, are constructed in Switzerland and then transported to Cambridge where it was erected. And um, we talk about uh, double curved um, elements we talk about the precision between the prefabricated elements that are less than one millimeter. So this is a very good example on, on that as well. And to, also to give a bridge between what we have seen so far regarding the industrial construction, we also are able to do this kind of buildings with similar processes. That's why I think this is a very interesting building among other things. But this is our context. Um, <clears throat> red houses with white corners, white windows, low rise buildings in wood. Uh, two, three stories uh, painted in red or not painted at all. Planking walls or logs, horizontal logs with a cladding, a facade of wood. Uh, <clears throat> but it could all in, in towns, the, 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 the wooden structure was quite often cladded with a plaster to make the buildings look like it was out of stone. Most people didn't, could, couldn't afford building in bricks and stone. It was for the more healthier persons in a ordinary town. So, and I think this is still the fact that wood is, can, can offer a more cost effective solution for a sustainable living. But this is the, somehow the context where we start from. And, and I, I, we, we can see this in, many buildings that are built today, especially when we talk about two, three story buildings. We look back on the figure, the big picture to the left. Uh, the corners are essential. In the picture in the middle that was built, a couple of buildings like that one was built 20 years ago and with the same philosophy, how they were constructed in a way that it should be easy to construct, but also easy to deconstruct, to be able to build it up on another site. That building in the middle has been on, I think, three or four different places. I don't know where it is right now, but that was the project was to show about circularity. Even though wood is as circular as a material, we also need to think more about how we design in a way that 
the buildings are easy to construct, but also easy to deconstruct. The building at the right, that is not a log timber building. It is an ordinary, so to speak, a timber frame building as we have seen Helena and others show so far. But you can see they want to emphasize the corners. They want to emphasize the old tradition we have in Sweden with these uh, corners and, and log timber buildings. Timber frame buildings. This is um, from the United States. And um, this is the same technology that we have used during the 20th century in Sweden when we have built family houses two stories high. In, the, in North America, I think about 80% of all residential buildings up to six stories in height are built with this kind of timber frame. Two by four studs placed with a distance around 400 millimeters. And <clears throat> we were in North America to, to see this and that was quite astonishing being a Scandinavian uh, to visit this kind of building sites, huge building sites with this rather simple technology, two by four. Um, and we were quite surprised, I must say. That was one of the inspiration sources to the very first multi-story timber frame buildings built in Sweden. And that history started in 1994, when we got a new set of building codes, performance-based building codes. Previously, we had a descriptive building code telling us, telling us more in detail how we should construct different parts of a building depending on what kind of building or what kind of height that building was in. <clears throat> now we had this performance-based building codes telling us that a building must fulfill these, these requirements regarding acoustics, regarding fire, regarding moisture, et cetera, et cetera. But the building codes doesn't say anything about what kind of material you should use to achieve that. This is a cross section for the, the very first uh, so-called multi-story timber frame buildings because in, in Sweden, since it was allowed, and, and the first psychological barrier was the floor between the second story and the third story to convince Swedish uh, engineers, construction people that it was possible to build higher buildings than two stories. So that was the first psychological barrier the floor between the second and third story. We wanted also to break the se second psychological barrier, that is the floor between the fourth and the fifth uh, story, because at that level, the fire requirements change from 60 minutes for a wall to 90 minutes. Another psychological barrier was the staircase and the elevator shaft. We suggested that that also could be done in a timber structure. And that was also an, indeed a psychological barrier. But we wanted to push forward this kind of bar barriers to 
make a bridge over them, so to speak. And uh, the, the result, the very first multi-story timber frame buildings was these two buildings, one in four stories and one in five stories. And they were also cladded with plaster as we have done in history, during history. And, in it, and um, <clears throat> it was also related to fire and um, it, it, ha it ha has not anything to do with a structure in timber. It, you need to protect the facade in higher buildings in, in, concrete, uh, in concrete or in steel. It has nothing to do what, with the, the structural parts. Uh, the low bearing parts in, of the building. Another technique is this uh, old, rather old technique about planking walls, planks nailed together, forming this kind of elements. Also very common in um, the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, and now we can see the CLT, the cross laminated timber as we have heard previously but it has a, a, his, a history back in time. The idea in itself is not completely new. This technology opened up for much more than five or four stories in height. This is um, the cultural house in Fileftio just recently inaugurated and it's 19 stories uh, high. And of course, the cross laminated timber has made it possible to do this kind of building. Another system is the beam column system. The third, system. We have talked about the, the stud walls, the, the massive timber, cross laminated timber structure. And we also have the column beam system. To the left, it's also from the cultural house in Fileftio, the library. And to the right, we have a library for cars, the parking garage. Also a psychological barrier to <clears throat> where we need a bridge and to show that it is possible. Thomas, and la last two minutes, please. Yes. <laughs> we also need to how we use different building systems, where we, how we use different materials, as was pointed out previously, how, when we should use massive constructions in timber and when we could use stud walls or column beam structures and how we use the right parts of the log for the right purpose. And we have also heard about blue lamp earlier. And this is a method that has been used in Sweden for about hundred years and where you can use the best quality of the wood, the best quality of the log at the outer part and the bottom part and the top part of a beam. And in between you can use lower quality. And that kind of technology has been used for about 100 years in, in Sweden. And it has been used where you need larger spans, where you need to, when you want to do curved structures like railway stations, like this one in, in, in Malmö. And yes, we have, it's no risk that we will be out of wood. 
in Sweden at least, 70% of all our land is covered by forest. And we have twice as much forest today compared to what we had 100 years ago. And um, <clears throat> uh, we only use what is the ad addition to the forest. So the, the, I think we have a very sustainable forestry in Scandinavia and in Sweden. When we build in wood, we create a carbon sink. We use renewable materials. In 70 years, eight years, we have a new uh, tree that could be used in different kinds of buildings. And building in wood makes it affordable for most people to, to live a good life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. This was an excellent presentation. Uh, we need to leave this room because there will be other session uh, that will be held in this uh, room, let's say. We will move to now uh, this hopping area to continue with the question and answer session. And uh, thanks again for uh, all the participants, all the panelists. And uh, we hope this kind of uh, activities will be repeated. So 